Hello, I am Ramesh Sinivasan, back again with a JE concept. We have here a fixed pulley, it's also called a capstan. A capstan is a long cylinder, vertical. So, you have a fixed pulley or a capstan, it is rough, the coefficient of friction is mu. There is a light rope or string passing over the pulley. The tensions on the other two sides, the other sides are T1 and uh, T2. T2 is greater than T1. And the string subtends an angle beta in contact. The string which is in contact with the pulley subtends an angle beta with the center of the pulley. Now, the string of the rope because it is light, it must necessarily slip. However rough the pulley may be, the contact surfaces of the pulley and the rope may be, because the rope or string is light, it must necessarily slip. It must necessarily slip. Let us see why that is so with a simple example. Let's say we have a surface, a rough surface and uh, we have a block of mass M. The coefficient of friction is mu here, this is a rough surface and uh, we apply a small force F. So obviously there will be a frictional force F and if there is no slip, if there is no slip, what can we say? F must be equal to F and also F must be less than or equal to mu M1. I will call this as F1. F1 equal to F and F1, M, F1 equal to F and F1 must be less than the limiting value that is mu Mg. From this I can say mu must be greater than or equal to F by Mg or the minimum mu required for no slip is F by Mg. Now we will easily see that if M is very small, it is in the denominator, so mu minimum, the minimum mu required for no slip gets exceedingly large and the surface, our rough may not be able to match that minimum mu if the mass m is very less. So even if a small force is applied, it will necessarily slip. So that's the idea here. Here when you have a string here, the string is also light. So therefore, it will necessarily slip. Why this point has to be is important is because in the derivation relating these two tensions, we are going to say F equal to mu n. We can say this only if there is a slip. Otherwise you cannot say it. Otherwise F will be less than the limiting value. F limiting equal to mu n. We are going to use this. Otherwise F will be less than the limiting value. So, we have just proved that the slip, the string will necessarily slip. Now let's go about the the derivation, the relation between T1 and uh, T2. Let us, uh, let me draw the pulley here and uh, this is the rope I am showing, so subtending angle beta, this is the angle beta. Now what I am going to do is, I am going to take a small element of the rope. This is theta and this angle is d theta. So I have a small element of the infinitely small element of the rope. This entire angle is beta. This is theta is some general theta. This is the rope over it. Let us uh, 
redraw this and write the force equations. So I will show that element. I will show it as uh, this as uh, d theta. I have enlarged it for you. And uh, here you have the tension T. As you progress ahead, the tension is T plus dt. I shall uh, draw uh, angle bisector and show dn the normal force due to this element of the string normal force by the pulley on the string there will be a frictional force df because the uh, string is going in the clockwise direction the uh, uh, friction force will be anti-clockwise so against the skill now, if this is the angle bisector, now I am going to draw a line parallel to the bisector here and a normal here like that, a normal here and a parallel here. These three are parallel and this is perpendicular to this, this line which I dotted line which I have shown. So, this is theta by 2, d theta by 2, this is d theta by 2. 2, this is alternate angle, so this is also d theta by 2, this is 90 degrees tangent, the tension is tangential, this is the radius, this is 90 degrees, these two dotted lines are also at 90 degrees, so d theta by 2 plus this is 90 and this plus this is also 90, this is common, so therefore this becomes d theta by 2, similarly this will also be d theta by 2. Now you can re, uh, resolve T, T as uh, T cos d theta by 2 and here we will have T sin d theta by 2. Similarly here we will have T cos d theta by 2 and here you would have, uh, sorry, this will be T plus d t t plus dt cos theta by 2, t plus dt sin d theta by 2. Now this uh, string, because it is an element and it is having negligible uh, mass, we know the net force on it must be 0 even if it is accelerating. F net is mass into acceleration. If the mass is negligible, for this element, the net force must be 0 even if it is accelerating. So, let us uh, equate the forces. So, I have basically on the T cos d theta by 2 plus df will be equal to t plus dt cos d theta by 2. Now we know from trigonometric approximation for small theta cos theta is 1. So this will be 1, this will be 1 and t, t will cancel on either side and I get df equal to dt. Along the normal dn will be equal to t sin d theta by 2 plus t plus dt sin d theta by 2. For small angles, sin theta equal to theta. So I have t d theta by 2 plus t d theta by 2 plus dt d theta by 2. We can neglect this because both are infinitesimally small. So if they are multiplied, they become extremely small. So this goes up and uh, you have this as T d theta. So dn is T d theta. So now because we said that a slip, we proved it in the beginning, we can say df is equal to mu into dn. df we saw was dt and this is mu 
and dn is nothing but t d theta. So now we simply get all the tangent terms on one side dt by t is equal to mu d theta let us integrate this from t1 to t2 and theta varies from 0 to beta so this will give you long of t limits t1 to t2 this is equal to mu theta beta so this will be ln of t2 by t1 is equal to mu beta or we have t2 by t1 is equal to e power mu beta so t2 will be t1 into e power mu beta this is the capstan equation now remember if there is a pulley with two masses suspended on either side like that vertically suspended then beta will be pi. So T2 will be T1 e power pi beta. Now supposing uh, this whole thing is wound once. It is not coming straight, but there is a it wound once and brought down here. So the beta for one round it will be 2 pi and for the half round it will be pi. So T2 will be equal to T1 e power 3 pi mu. Earlier it was T1 e power pi mu. Now it is e power 3 pi mu. So with the same force T1, the effort, the effort T1, you will be able to lift a greater load. So that is why you find that they are the strings, even in cranes you must have seen. The, there is a capstan and on the capstan the wire which is there goes round, two rounds, three rounds. So for every round there is a two pi added. So less effort for the same effort for more load. Thank you.